I call this meeting Northam City Council order for no November 12, 2019. This meeting is being recorded. Will the clerk please take the roll? Bona? Here. Boddington? Here. Cohen? Here. Harpin? Hopkins? LaForest? Here. Liam? Here. Moran? Here. Wilkinson? Here. You have a quorum? Thank you. Uh, please stand for a moment of silence, remembering Joseph Degata, Degata, who served for over 30 years as a member of the North Adams Police Force, Ruth Giroux, teacher, aide at Sullivan School, and Anthony Mandel, metal fabrication instructor at McCann Technical High School. And the pledge. The pledge of allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the minutes from September 10th, 2019. So Motion. moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Minutes approved. Hearing visitors, two minutes on any agenda item? Yes, Mr. Smith. Robert Smith, I live at 140 Pleasant Street in North Adams. In regards to 11.811.A, 11 11 uh, where Councilor Forrest is uh, going to speak in reference to the solicitor, uh, I'm in favor of anything that could be done so that the council could have access to the solicitor when they need to, that there wouldn't be uh, any issues where they can't reach him or can't get information on a legal basis for anything that goes on in the council. So I commend Councilor Forrest for bringing this up again tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in hearing of visitors? Not hearing any. Uh, yes, this is on tonight's agenda items, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Good evening, thank you for the time. I'm Dan Wallace, I'm uh, at 81 Cherry Street here in North Adams, Massachusetts. And in regards to the mayor's request that the city council approve the uh, negotiation for the property, uh, the, uh, the Sullivan School, I'd like to voice my um, strong, enthusiastic support of the project um, for multiple reasons. Um, the uh, taking of the property out of city's hands into a private development, the ongoing economic development um, that will incur from that project um, and many other items that I have sent to each of you uh, via email, say for you, Mr. Wilkinson, um, uh, got to bounce back. Thank you. And anyone else? Yes. Thank you. Name and address for the record, please. Of course. My name is Andrew Kozak. I live at 46 D Street here in North Adams. I've lived here approximately 45 years. Uh, on the agenda tonight, there will be some discussion regarding uh, uh, potential land acquisition slash sale regarding the Pawnal um, land just over the border. It used to be part of the North Adams uh, Broadbrook watershed. Uh, perhaps it's being sold. Um, there'll be some discussion as to what it's worth. Uh, I'm also the president of the Hoosick River Watershed Association, which is a minor player in this uh, potential land sale. But fundamentally, our goal as part of the watershed, which is uh, the organization's over 33 years old, is we are advocates for the river. And anything that can be done to um, encourage and support cold water fisheries, which acquisition of this land, put it into some sort of, um, I'll say, land trust. Our organization is not a land trust. We just are advocates for the river. However, some other organizations, whether it be um, trustees of reservations or some other organizations which would actually acquire some or most of this property would be effectively protecting it in addition to some other players. My support for the sale is that it's not a, really a developable property, meaning condominiums. It's in a rustic area. It's in an area that would be very difficult for septic systems and things like that. It's really the value is open space, open space management and I support the, uh, the sale of it at a, a slightly reduced price for purposes of protecting the watershed, protecting the cold water fishery, and supporting the 
elements of the Hoosick River Watershed Association. Thank you. Anyone else we're hearing of visitors? <coughs> hearing any, we will move on to the agenda. Paper number 10540-4, an ordinance amending Chapter 13 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of North Adams, Section 13 uh, sorry, 61, entitled Fees for Parking Zones. Uh, need a motion to pass to a second reading and public as publish as required. So move. Second. Second. Second here. Uh, no. Discussion. Yes. Go ahead. I just want to make sure my second was recorded. Uh, we can we can amend that. So, is, so. It, uh, okay. So uh, my understanding was that this was part of the uh, broader fee uh, restructuring that appears later in the agenda, and that the all of the fees would go to the finance committee for review. Okay. Or I uh, that's my my thought process. I don't. Okay. Councilor Lamb. I would concur with Councilor okay. LaForest on that. Uh, and Doug, um, so we have that as discussion. The, the original motion can be rescinded if that is the thought. Um, I'll, I'll remove my uh, motion. Okay. So the motion has been moved, and so we're so looking for I, a new motion. I'm going to make a new motion to refer this to the Finance Committee for review. And second. Yeah. Um, if it's a second. It's a separate agenda item, right? Hmm. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Council LaForest. Any other discussion? Not hearing any. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Do, point of order. Do we need a return date? Return date. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So we first. actually do need to amend that since we. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'll amend that with a return date of the first meeting in January. All right. Um, so. Does that work or is it too far? Yeah. As, as a member of the finance committee, our chair is not here tonight. We do no, not know. know who's going to be on the finance committee in our next session. Um, so I would just say if the finance committee could meet prior to that and come up with a decision, that's one thing. I don't know if they will or not. So it's hard to give a return date. Right. Well, may I? Uh, uh, Councilor LaForest and Councilor Cullen. So I believe uh, Councilor uh, Harpin is away uh, on business and unable to attend tonight's meeting, but I think she's anticipating. Uh, this and has been uh, in communication with the uh, the administration on this for several months. Uh, so I, I would think that uh, trying to wrap it up before the end of the year uh, would be a good idea. Okay. So. Um, so I agree. Second meeting in December. Um, yeah, I think that that probably maybe the first. Let's do the first. That gives us like two weeks to schedule it and review these. And to keep in mind right now, we're just voting and discussing the amendment. Councilor Lamb? Um, just to the, with the holiday in between, I'm not sure that it makes sense for us to try to nail that down. Right. Well, uh, and that's, soon. may and I, sorry, Olin, no. because I did speak to Councilor Harpin about this, and she did tell me to refer it to the first week in Jan or the first meeting in January. So I'm happy to amend it too. Okay. So, um, so right now we have a motion to the first meeting but we have not seconded that so I'll second that okay now discussion yeah. um, the reason why I think that that actually makes sense is it would still be this current council that would be completing that before that meeting so it, it it's okay for that to come back to council at that point and at any point if something gets referred and comes back and it's not ready we can always I mean we don't like to do it but we can postpone it if necessary so I think the first meeting in January is reasonable just because of the season that we're currently in in terms of when people might be available or not available other counselors keep in mind if we're trying to run this in conjunction with the other fees you know I mean these these can be done separate but there are a lot of fees to go over so um, all right any uh, counselor of the forest I don't have a strong objection but I, I still think uh, it makes sense to have a return date before the end of the year and then if we need to postpone it again uh, it at least gives uh, this finance committee and this council an opportunity to vote on this and wrap this up. Uh, many of us felt uh, at the turn of last year that there was a lot of confusion carrying over work that had been started by one committee uh, with the, the renegotiating of the or the restructuring of the committees. Um, so I would, would still encourage us to uh, see this again before the end of the year and then postpone it if we have to. 
Councillor Wilkinson? I concur. All right, so I'll amend it. Okay. To the second meeting in December. Does that work for everybody? It's going to be Councillor Wilkinson, Co Councillor Harpin, and myself yep. that will review. Yes, second. Okay. So we're amending it to December 27th. Is it? Six. 26 or the 27th? The 24th is a Monday, the 25th is a I'm All sorry, right, so the 24th is a Tuesday. Yep, so 26. Yep. Right. Okay, to December 26. Uh, any other discussion? And this is only on the amendment. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> All right, so now we go back to the original of uh, uh, the postponement to um, with the return date of December 22nd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. To postpone. Paper number 11,811, communication from Council of Forest requesting process for appealing to the city solicitor. This was in City Council September 24th, 2019. It was voted to refer to the General Government Committee and then voted to postpone to the meeting on November 12th, 2019. What do we entertain? Uh, motion to refer back to committee with the return date uh, of the 22nd of December. The Second. The return date of what? The December 22nd. Oh, okay. Uh, is that the not return the date? Six. Oh, the sixth. I'm sorry. I yeah. I transcribed the date wrong. Uh, okay. So return date of December 26. Yes. Sorry okay. about that. That's okay. We're all confused. We're like, we're coming I was going to say we just said the 26th. Yeah. So ad hoc meeting. I see. Yeah. Uh, we got a second from Councilor Lamb. Any discussion? Uh, Councilor Bunnington and Councilor LaForest. Oh, I, I feel as I'm a little I'm a little out of the loop. I just like a little explanation on why we're referring this back. Councilor LaForce. Uh, there is a draft uh, in the works. Councilor Hopkins uh, is out of the city on uh, family business tonight, uh, so could not be here. We hadn't had a chance to have a second meeting. There is a draft uh, for this process. Uh, the committee does need to do a little more work on it, and we should be able to uh, wrap it up uh, by then so that it will be in place for the uh, new term. Other councilors? Not hearing any. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Motion carries to postpone to December 26. Paper number 11,824, Mayor's Communication number 85, designation of McCann School Committee members as a special municipal employees. Without objection, we will file the communication and move to the paper. Uh, paper number 11,824, an order designating McCann School Committee members to special municipal employees. Uh, motion to adopt in order. So moved. And a second. A second. All right. In discussion, Mayor, did you want to start this off? Uh, again, I'll, I'll just say that the, uh, the communication from Superintendent Brosnan lays out the rationale for this. Uh, it's something that every municipality in the, uh, the McCann vocational district is being asked to do. Uh, the understanding from the superintendent is it had been done in the past, and this is just uh, to be consistent with other with all the municipalities so every every community has the has the common designation mayor do you want to just explain exactly how this changes things if anything really doesn't okay all right uh any other counselors yes Councilor buddington um just so i understand um through the chair to the mayor this designation is permanent once we make it it, it is I mean, it, it, do, it doesn't expire on its own. No, it is it is permanent for the for the elected members. It does you know so a person who's a, a committee member who ceases serving would no longer be so designated. It's it oh. car it carries with the position. Oh, understood. That, Thank you. If that is a helpful clarification. Yes. Other counselors? Not hearing any. This is a roll call vote. Buddington. Yes. Cohen. Yes. LaForest. Yes. Liam. Yes. Moran. Yes. Wilkinson. Yes. Bona. Yes. Motion carries. Motion carries. Paper number 11,825, Mayor's Communication number 86, recommending the appointment of Kimberly Brown to the mobile home rent control for a term to expire September 1st, 2024. Motion to adopt, uh, motion to accept the appointment. So motion moved. to adopt. And or second, whichever came first. <laughs> Any discussion? Not hearing any. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Paper number 11,620-1, Mayor's Communication number 87 regarding the sale of real estate to 
of city owned property in Pondell, Vermont. Without objection, we'll file the communication, move to the paper, pay, uh, paper number 11,620-1, an order authorizing the mayor under the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30B, to sell city-owned real estate located in Pondell, Vermont. Motion to adopt the order. So moved. Second. Second. And discussion. Mayor, do you want to start this off again? Uh, again, the the proposal, as, as was spoken to, I intends to use this land for conservation purposes. Uh, this was the third uh, attempt to put this land out for, for bid, which began, uh, I think the first one was in late November of 2017. No bid was received. Uh, the second time, uh, we did not recommend the bid. This time, uh, I believe it's uh, w worthy of consideration by the council given uh, the the proposal given the issues that were were laid out with the land and uh, again the the suggestion that it be it be used for conservation and if you look at uh, some of the some of the land trust land that already exists this is sort of the missing piece of the of a, of a puzzle that includes land on either side of this of this watershed land so it's uh, really linking up what already exists okay. Councilor Wilkinson and Councilor Lamb I just want to speak about the sales price. It's obviously much less than the assessed value, though they assess property in Vermont a lot di differently than they assess property in Massachusetts, so that can be somewhat misleading. Uh, the proposal is selling the land at $800 an acre. In the real estate world, in the appraisal world, when we're working up in that section of Vermont, we use five hundred to a thousand dollars an acre for excess land depending upon its quality depending upon its topography depending upon its build uh, buildability i've been on th this track of land numerous times it lacks all those things it's not buildable it has terrible topography and i don't believe anything perks up there though again vermont has a different standard than massachusetts so getting eight hundred dollars an acre for this is doing pretty good i would urge the council to uh, move ahead with the sale. Thank you. Councilor Lamb. I'll just preface that I am completely in favor of this uh, and uh, enthusiastic about the sale in this respect. Um, the contiguous aspect, the watershed aspect, uh, the long-term preservation is really important. Um, the only question I had, and this is really just for public kind of awareness, um, I know that periodically we've done timber uh, off of that that land and just to make it clear that that's not a big money maker for the city it, if anything it barely breaks even on the property and I just wanted to kind of ask that question directly to the mayor that that's correct you know how I think we do it every you know five to, to seven I don't remember when the when the last time I don't have that right at hand but effectively what we get from the timbering of the land it more or less equals what we pay in taxes to to panel on it so it really is a wash thank you Councilor Buddington um, I just like to state my my strong support I, I feel as though putting this like selling this to uh, organization that's going to conserve it and and add to the watershed protection as well as providing public recreation is just about the best case scenario we could have for this land so um, thank you to, to Hura for for your advocacy in this as well other councilors not hearing any this is a roll call vote Boddington yes Cohen yes LaForest yes Liam yes Moran yes Wilkinson yes Kona <clears throat> yes motion, pass. motion passes paper number 11801-1 mayor's communication number 88 regarding the sale of real estate located at 21 William Street Johnson School. Without objection, we'll file the communication and move to paper number 11801-1. An order authorizing the mayor under the provisions of Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30B to sell real estate located at 21 William Street, Johnson School. Motion to adopt is in order. Motion to adopt. Second. And discussion. The mayor, do you want to start it off? Uh, sure. Again, uh, just echoing some of what's in the proposal. I know the, the folks here and the folks at home don't necessarily have the benefit of this in front of them, uh, but Mr. Morese has put forward a proposal to redevelop uh, the Johnson School property into what he's calling the Amity Square Apartments. Uh, 
tying that back to the neighborhood in which it's located. He's looking at uh, approximately 20 units of high-end apartments within the school uh, and, and the plan to move forward with this as soon as the, uh, the current tenant in Johnson School is, uh, is out. So moving uh, very quickly to, uh, to create this, to meet, to meet a need, and one that I, that I believe is, um, will be welcomed by the neighborhood. So it's turning the school into, into housing, retaining the, the residential character of the neighborhood. Councilor Liam. Uh, a few things here. I think this is a, a really great reuse of that property. It's adapted, but it's not taking away the historic character. Um, it's maintaining the <coughs> the residential zoning that's already in that that space, um, and it's not over inundating it with a lot of small units, which I think is important. Um, I would also just note when we talk about um, trying to increase our local population, this is one of those key steps in getting there, um, especially when we're trying to recruit young families to the area. They're looking for um, an elevated quality of residential housing in tight-knit units where it creates a community. And this is essentially what uh, Mr. Marizzi is attempting to do on that property. Councilor Cohen and Councilor Wilkinson. I've said it before with Mr. Marizzi. He has a track record in this city and in the community. So um, I know that, you know, he can get something done and he really can make great use of this. So I'm in favor of this as well. Okay. Councilor Wilkinson. I don't want to keep harping on the real estate side of it but obviously that's my business um, I've had the opportunity to praise the, the, this school uh, four times now there's a reason that head starts moving out of there the building is in deplorable condition um, I don't know what, what the, the back and forth with the city is but the city refuses to put any repairs in it, and that's why head starts moving out and finding another location uh, we do not want to have to maintain this building so if you have a, a good con a developer coming uh, along and taking it off our hands, we're doing real good. Because down the road, it's going to cost us more than we'd ever dream. So I'm all in favor of it. Okay. Councilor Bunnington, Councilor LaForest. Um, <clears throat> this is a point, that, a question I had and asked um, of the mayor's office today uh, regarding both this property and the, the Sullivan School. So I'll just mention it this once. Um, I had some concerns that... <clears throat> we might have some access to the mass broadband fiber through these properties um, and, and was concerned that the city would, might lose access to these points uh, via the sale. But I, I'm, I'm th convinced enough, I think, that, that access to the fiber actually is, can be done through the, the lines on the poles and that it's not a, not a big deal if we lose uh, these community access uh, points. Councilor LaForest. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, there's nothing I can really add to this, but uh, uh, Marese Associates' uh, track record is uh, absolutely fantastic, and uh, this RFP makes the most sense uh, of any I've seen since I've been on council. Okay. Other councilors? Not hearing any, this is a roll call vote. Boddington? Yes. Cohen? Yes. LaForest? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Moran? Yes. Wilkinson? Yes. Bona? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, the next paper, um, do I read it in it first or do I just start? All right, so it's going to be paper number 11,570-1, Mayor's Communication number 89 regarding the sale of real estate located at 151 Kemp Avenue Sullivan School. Uh, so due to the appearance of conflict, and I'll say appearance because there's no financial gain uh, between myself and Councillor Lamb with both the bidders on this. Um, I think we've been advised and the best step is for both of us to step down uh, during this. So this will be unique because in all the years I've served, I can't think of any time the president and the vice president haven't had to sit in here. Um, so I, we're going to step down and then the city clerk's going to take over and do a very an interim president uh look for a vote for an interim president to fill in just on this item and then we'll be right back so we entertain a motion for a nomination for an interim president yes I'd like to nominate councillor cohen okay, second a second okay. second i do <laughs> all, in favor. all in favor sorry aye. All in favor. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> One little job and I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> 
So this is the moment when I introduce the surprise paper. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few papers of my own, Mayor. <laughs> All right. Swearing in ceremony. No swearing in ceremony? I like that idea. I have my Should own I little share? thing in the jiggies here. Sworn in. Okay. Not do I have to be officially sworn in? <laughs> Let me get this on. Okay. So do I reread the motion? So you're going to turn to the, to the actual motion, which is right here. And you're going to read this. Oh, this is I like this. Stuff for you there. Yes. <laughs> Good job. Uh, so, a paper number 11,500, paper number 11,570 1, in order authorizing the mayor under the provisions of Massachusetts general laws, Chapter 30B to sell real estate located at 151 Kemp Ave, Sullivan School. A motion to adopt the order. Uh, motion to postpone to the second meeting of November, November 26th. Did I say that right there? No, you're right. He's second. Right. He's making a motion. That's fine. Okay, okay. discussion. Council of the Forest. Uh, so the uh, reason to postpone this uh, is because of the obvious uh, absences uh, this evening uh, in the council and the fact that two councilors uh, must abstain uh, from the discussion and vote. Um, so I believe that it behooves the council to have as many members here as possible so that there uh, aren't just a few of us uh, discussing and voting on uh, this motion. And I don't, one, two, three, four, five. We don't have enough. Don't we don't have enough. Don't so have enough. we don't have a quorum to vote on this. So we would have to postpone a vote until the 26th. Uh, be, oh, do we, do we, sorry. Do we, yes, need six? Do we need a supermajority? We would for need two thirds of the full council, which we would not have enough. Um, Did you have more to add as well? Because you had your just, hand up. Yeah, just a little bit. Sure. Uh, it, if if the council feels it's appropriate, I would like to hear more about this because I I feel as though there's a lot of background that I haven't heard yet, <laughs> and I understand perhaps the yep. desire is to postpone everything. But I feel s with with so many people here, I just love to learn more. Councilor Marcus. Yeah. I mean, obviously, when we get to a vote on this, I believe it's going to be very controversial. Um, and a lot more knowledge needs to be done. Even though it's going to get postponed, I was going to make the motion to, to set it to committee because the uh, public wants to have input on it. I'm sure the council members need more information. Certainly, I do. There's an expression of raising a lot of money, but I don't see anybody writing a check. So, I mean, it's a matter of... Uh, we don't know enough yet. Um, was that finance committee? Did you do that? No, 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 no. I wasn't saying finance committee. It was just, oh, and we're not doing that now. We're just oh, postponing we're now. Um, whether it goes to finance or community development, I'm not sure which would be the most appropriate. But uh, a lot more information needs to be known before we move forward with this. So uh, can I discuss? while I'm up here. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want to refer it to a committee then? We want to bring it back? Councilor LaForest? Is that? Because I feel as though it sh should go to committee too. I think we can refer it to a committee from here without bringing it back so that we can start this going. Uh, I mean, we certainly opinion. can refer it to committee. Um, uh, uh, Councilor Lamb, who's abstaining, is chair of the Economic Development Committee. So I don't know that it necessarily makes sense to send it to that committee. Mm -hmm. um, I, I suppose barring sending it to development, it should go to finance. Um, I, I, so I don't know if there's a perfect fit, but it would at least give uh, the counselors and community uh, an opportunity to discuss the matter um, a little more, a little less formally um, and allow um, more community members to speak uh, than we would permit in, in this forum. Um, so I have no objection to rescinding my motion if we, you know, if it's the... You, can bring it. you don't have to rescind it. You just make another motion, correct? You can amend Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, also Councilor Harpin's not here, and I don't know that it was on her radar to take it up in Finance Committee, um, and I'm not sure Yeah, there what. are a lot of kind of unknowns right now. So I thought, you know, still it would make more sense to discuss it in two weeks. Any other counselors? Yes. Um, I, I, would, I would favor. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I would favor sending it to community development because I feel as though that topically is, is more 
at least it matches my concerns more than finance. The only problem with that is that you, and you can certainly do a committee me a meeting with two people, but you're asking the chairman to re recuse himself right off the bat. So, I mean, it's, uh, if you would just want to use it for a forum I'm so right that the hand. public can speak and maybe the people that want to purchase the school can speak, two people can do that. that that's mm -hmm. not a problem. Uh, if you have to have a vote on something other than referring it back to council, then I don't know if it's fair to uh, uh, just to have two members. But if it's just for a uh, public forum, that would be fine. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if we send it to community development and it's not able to have a meeting before the next council meeting, then, you know, we hear it at council. But if we could, I think I agree, if we could shake some questions out prior to the next meeting um, it would be beneficial because it is it is more open to I think community response when we're able to, to speak freely in uh, committee so so is there a motion to refer to community development no we do not we still have a motion to postpone we do both so. is there a second for the for the postponed motion yeah, I think there, there was, was. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'd just like Mr. to <laughs> Uh, I have heard from, from exactly two people about this, which is one reason I feel woefully under-informed on it. Um, I, it sound, seems like we're not going to have much of a discussion tonight. I, is there any way we could just get a airing of quick the, the issues that I should be researching for the next meeting? Are there any counselors who who who'd Could want we to? have the mayor pop speak on this, please? Well, I think if it's going to be referred to, to committee, that would be the place to agree to air that. So I'd okay. like to understand what the will of the council is at this point. Well, I think we're under discussion right now. So if there is any questions that could be asked, I think the counselor should be able to ask right now. Okay. No, I, yes, counselor. No, it has nothing to do with that. It was it was a matter of where were we going to discuss it. So I'll I'll let it I'll let it go. What was our return yeah, date I'll, again? So we have a postponement on the table. Un until which meeting? What, what meeting would you like to postpone it? You said the committee. Okay, the I, I'll rescind the motion to postpone. Okay. So we okay. need a motion. So um, do we have a motion to refer? I, I make a motion to uh, um, send it to the finance committee. Motion to refer to finance. Second. Only because I think that you're... And we need a return date. Um, well, you're here, but uh, second week of I think that we could probably we need to, we need to move this along yeah. for the we'll find a time. How about Second the next next December. meeting? Next meeting? Yes. So that would be the 26th. Uh, December 26th. Yes. No, next meeting. Oh, I thought you said the second meeting. In no, he's saying the next meeting. No. So November. Two, two weeks. Which is oh also, no, this is, which is something that shouldn't be as well. postponed and postponed and postponed. So November 26th. Yes, I'll okay. second that. That's two weeks, but okay. So that's done. This one? Yes. Okay. Then do we? We need to vote on it still, right? We need okay. to have all in favor. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed? <laughs> You're dismissed. You dismissed. <laughs> I think I'm dismissed. Would you like to come back up? <laughs> Peaceful transition of power. All right. <laughs> hey, you got to do it once while you're uh, during your tenure. <laughs> uh, interim council president will go on her resume now. <laughs> All right. All right, paper number 11,826, Mayor's Communication number 90 regarding fee schedule amendments. Without objection, we will file the communication and move to paper number 11,826, an ordinance amending the revised ordinances of the City of North Adams regarding the various fees established in the city code. And do we entertain a motion? To postpone and refer. Okay, so we're going to motion refer to refer finance committee. to finance Second. with a return, return date, date of uh, well, December 26th. Yep. Second. And any other discussion? So we just to let you know, um, you did get emailed two different sheets. I had the city clerk tonight just make you copy of one set, which does show 
uh, the current fees and fines and the uh, amount that proposed versus the one we will actually be voting on is the other one, which just ha is the proposed. So you say do that again. Yeah, I don't understand what so you're saying. So there's, there's, I got it. We gave everyone should have got a copy tonight of this particular one. You got emailed two different sets. Too. This one will show the current fees next to the proposed fees. The other set that you got emailed just shows the proposed fees because that's what we're actually voting on. It would be the proposed fees, but this is going to committee anyway, so. Yes, Councilor Lefort. We were emailed two different documents? Yeah, but one yeah. was a schedule of fees. Right. There, you know, one there's was, two different ones. So I, yeah. I printed out what we were handed tonight. So is there something there else, else I should yes. be looking no, for? No, there's yes. nothing else. Well, there's, there's nothing else. You, are, you received both in your email. Yeah. What Council President Bona asked me to do was print out the current and the proposed so that you could see both. Just easier You're actually for you to look moving at. the schedule, which is what we okay. schedule you have. Oh, okay. Just and so then there's the replacement for, for the. I, I see. All right. Ignore yeah. me. Yep. Yeah. I just felt if you didn't have the large paper on your printer and this was an easier one to this look at, great. just make sure to bring that if you do go to the committee meetings and back next meeting if you'd got to refer to it. Uh, any other discussion? Not hearing any. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to the end of committee reports and minutes. Do we have any? Not hearing any, no licenses. Open forum, anyone wishing to speak? Name, address, you have two minutes. Uh, Mr. Smith. Robert Smith, 140 Pleasant Street, North Adams. Uh, first thing I want to do is congratulate the incumbents who have been reelected to the city council. I want to congratulate Mayor Bernard also being reelected mayor. So that assures me that we're going to be going in the right direction for the city for at least the next two years. But now I do have a citizen's concern in regards to uh, an area up near where I live. As you come up by the street and stop at the stop sign, uh, at the intersection of East Main and Pleasant, there was some work done several weeks ago in regards to uh, probably uh, replacing uh, a lamp post, which hasn't been done. But in the process, they took out five concrete slabs of the sidewalk, which leaves a situation which could be dangerous for people walking on that side of the street, especially the children going down to the Cocoa School. So I would urge uh, Mayor Bernard to put some uh, perhaps horses up there uh, on either side, which would uh, alert anybody that there is an issue with that sidewalk and uh, to be very careful. So that's my proposal to the mayor, and I just wanted the city council to know about it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in open forum? Yes. Mr. Urban. Roger Urban, National Street, North Adams. Ed Marino, who is our Veterans Graves Officer, has asked me to announce that the Veterans Flags at Southview will be picked up on this Saturday, the 16th. As we did last year, we invite all veterans, veterans organizations, all our citizens, we're all are welcome to assist us in this project, and we've also been notified at this point that the jury football team and the folks with Reads Across America will help us. We'll meet at the cemetery at 9 a.m. on the cemetery road that's adjacent to the bowling alleys, or bowling lanes, or whatever they are. Uh, a pair of pliers would be helpful if you can bring them, because sometimes the flags stick swell into the holder, <coughs> and they have to be yanked out. So if you got them, bring them. Once again, everybody's welcome. Look for the red shirts at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Anyone else for open forum? Yes. Larry Burdick, 12 Spencer Road, North Adams. To start off, I'd like to uh, thank this council and the mayor for their support for uh, Blackington Cemetery and Hillside Cemetery. Over to Blackington, at this point, we have done our 145 stones. 
in Hillside, we have done 1,467 stones starting at 1212 this year. So I just wanted to give everybody an update and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for open forum? Not hearing any, we will move to Mayor's concerns. Thank you. Uh, three quick items. Uh, thank you to everyone who was involved in organizing and participating in yesterday's uh, Veterans Day observances. Uh, we had a really incredible keynote address by Jim Briho, who's an Air Force veteran and a National Executive Committee member with the American Legion. Uh, during his, his remarks, he invited all the veterans present to uh, come forward to uh, be recognized with him at the podium, and it was a really uh, powerful, powerful moment for the folks who were, who were there. Uh, I also just want to mention on a personal note how impressed I was with the number of young people who were in attendance. Uh, including those from the, the scout pack as well as the jury band and band front. Uh, you know, as we, as we have these observances, uh, we have, you know, many veterans there, but to see young people turning out and uh, recognizing our veterans for their service is a, it's a powerful statement about our community. Uh, today was the first day of the city food drive, which benefits the Northern Berkshire Interfaith Action Initiative's Alf Nelson Friendship Center Food Pantry. Uh, we'll be collecting food and personal care items through Friday, November 22nd. Uh, we're accepting non-perishable food as well as personal care items. Uh, there are collection boxes at City Hall, the police and fire departments, the public schools, the Spitzer Center, the public library, and as of uh, today, Northern Berkshire EMS signed on as well. Uh, everything will be delivered and weighed in at the Nelson, Al Nelson Friendship Center on Monday, November 22nd. And I would like to issue a personal challenge. Last year, we set a record by raising just over 1,000 pounds of food and personal care items. I'd like to double that this year and contribute a ton of food and personal care items to the Al Nelson Friendship Center. So I encourage all those who are able to, to join me in that challenge. Thanks, Eric. And then finally, our annual holiday tree lighting will be Wednesday, November 27th at 6 p.m. Uh, as usual, the jury band and band front will lead the procession up Main Street to kick off the festivities. Uh, and in case of inclement weather, the tree lighting will move to the following Friday, December 6th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Liaison updates, counselor's concerns. Not seeing any correspondence. We have none. A motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye.